This is our review of the best live streaming software for Mac in 2024. After testing all the leading options, we'll share the top Mac live streaming apps right now so that you can learn how to go live like a pro. So option number one is Prism Live. This is an amazing, totally free option. It's really easy to use, yet it's also feature rich as well. And there's also Windows and mobile versions available too. They make it really easy for you to go live to all the major platforms, and you can also multi-stream to multiple destinations too. Prism Live can also be used to record your live streams or even just to record videos as if you were live. You've got the ability to monitor your comments from within the app while you're live and also add on-screen widgets to showcase the chat feed on your stream as well. You can also easily do stuff like add in GIFs or stickers or music, and there's even a drawing mode where you can draw live on the screen. Great if you're going to be running some sort of live training. You also have the ability in here, like you do with a lot more professional software, is to create different scenes or different presets and templates for you to switch between with when you're live. So you could customize up a scene where it's full screen you on camera, maybe another one where you're off to the side but you're sharing your computer screen. And you can really have any number of these for different types of content you're gonna be creating. You can even do things like enable studio mode in here, which is more from traditional live streaming software, where you have the ability to make adjustments to things and to configure stuff up while you're live. And then when you're ready, then you can push it live or send it to the live feed. So I think it's cool that you've got that option in there because more basic software, you're kind of just configuring it up live and your viewers are seeing that while it's happening. There's even a feature in here to allow you to remotely control the app from your phone and also bring your phone in as an additional webcam. And I also absolutely love that they've got a built-in virtual camera too. So this is where your Prism Live software will show up as a webcam to other software, other apps, meaning that whatever you're doing in Prism Live, you can actually push through to other apps and tools as well. So if you've ever wanted to add text or graphics or customize up things like a Zoom meeting, then you can use the virtual camera tool here to help you do that. But overall, I think it's great for someone who is an absolute beginner, right up to, I guess, a high level of intermediate user. It's a good mix of simplicity, but also it's got a lot more of those pro tools for those that want more. Next up, and in no particular order, is Ecamm Live. And this one I would say is probably a little more intuitive, a little easier to navigate than Prism Live. But overall, it's it's got more professional features too. The overall interface is more customizable with floating window layout. So you can just hide what you don't need or move stuff out of the way to allow you to be focused on what it is you need to do. But there's also a lot of overlap with this tool and the others that I'm gonna mention with things like multi-streaming, with recording that's built in and having the ability to configure up and switch between different scenes or different layouts while you're live. Ecamm Live's also got a built-in virtual camera as well, which I use almost every day. And you also have the ability again to bring in all of your live comments all into one place so that if you are live on say Facebook and YouTube, then what you see as the host running this is a combined list of all the comments across the different platforms, making it easy for you to feature to engage without needing to open up the YouTube comments on YouTube and the Facebook comments on Facebook. But Ecamm Live's also got some more advanced functionality in here too, like having the ability to bring guests into your live stream. And Ecamm was actually one of the first tools to make this easy back in the day with direct Skype integration. But now it's evolved so much from there, they have a dedicated tool in here to do that too, where you can enable the feature, you can send out a link to whoever it is that you want to join, and they actually show up then as a video source that you can then add into your stream. And then again, combining this with different scenes and different layouts, you can have all of this stuff customized up before your guests even join. Ecamm Live also has ISO video recording built in, which I think is absolutely amazing. This is something that I use all the time, where it can record not just your overall completed live stream or recording, but it's recording isolated video tracks, so separate video files for each of your video sources. So if you've got three guests that you're bringing into your stream, then you can have three different files, one for each of the guests, but also your actual combined recording as well, meaning that then if you wanna re-edit this, take it into your editing software and make adjustments, you're not editing down your finished product. You can actually almost re-edit this from scratch in its entirety, having full control over who you wanna show on screen when, what size, 
in your editing software. So again, this makes it great not just for live streaming, but also for content recording and interviews and things as well. And I love that you can just use Ecamm Live in its basic form, basic functionality to go live easily. But you've also got access here to dive in and customize everything up for again, those that are looking for that. I also wanna point out that I'm a big fan of the Ecamm team as someone who has been using Ecamm Live since pretty much day one. It's amazing to see how much they've grown, but also how well they are connected to their community and how much they listen. And I think it's really helped them shape the direction of the software. And they've also got a great level of customer support too. Now, while we'll point out that there is not as many effects or widgets like on-screen chat, GIFs and stickers and things that you'll get in Prism, but overall you do have more control, more customization, more advanced features, and in a nicer, more intuitive interface, in my opinion. Now, in terms of pricing, there's a few different options that you've got. There is a free 14-day trial if you wanna jump in, have a play around, and see how it works for you. But your options from there, there is a standard plan, which is $20 per month, or $16 a month if you're billing annually. And they say here, this is perfect for those who are new to live video, ready to create custom branded live content. So you're gonna get access to a lot of what Ecamm has to offer in this plan. But if you wanna unlock everything that Ecamm has to offer, then that's where you wanna jump across to the pro plan, which is $40 on a month to month basis, or $32 per month if you're billing annually. And this is gonna unlock things like that virtual camera, 4K live streaming, the ISO video recording as well, for video and for audio, and a bunch of other more advanced features too. The next option is StreamYard. This is another one that we've spoken quite a bit on this channel about, and that's because it is an amazing option too. But this one is a little bit different to the other options that we've mentioned in this video because it isn't software that you download and install on your Mac. This one runs in your web browser. And this one has hands down one of the simplest, most intuitive and easy to use interfaces. But it also doesn't have a lot of the more pro or the really advanced features. But that's not to say that it doesn't pack a punch. And a great example of this is they make the whole scenes thing from the previous two options somewhat irrelevant for a lot of their users as there's a bunch of pre set templates and things that people can use without needing to customize anything up. And this makes it really easy for people to switch between these different layouts, which are essentially scenes too, just with the click of a button. They're positioned right up underneath the main preview monitor. You can switch between just with the click of a button. No need to customize things up further. But for those of you that want to, then you can dive in and customize things up as you'd like to as well. But straight out of the box, you'll find that a lot of these things are gonna be really usable the way that they come. But I imagine for a lot of people that are using it, those presets are gonna give you exactly what you need with no further customization needed. Things like different views on screen shares, different views for bringing in guests. And again, it's all at the click of a button. So obviously then StreamYard also has the ability to bring in guests. And while Ecamm can do it, and it does do it really well, I really love the simplicity of how StreamYard does it. Because again, StreamYard isn't software you're downloading, installing on your computer. This is all run through your web browser, it's run in the cloud. So the majority of the processing and everything is done on StreamYard's end. This really takes a huge load off your computer, which can become apparent if you're bringing in a lot of guests, or maybe you're working with an older computer. You're unlikely to have any issues with that stuff with StreamYard. It's also got a lot of the same functionality as the other options too, with built-in comments, the ability to play back videos, and support for multi streaming. And what I like about StreamYard's way that they handle multi-streaming is, again, because it's running remote from your computer, is that you really only need to send your stream, your camera, your computer screen through to StreamYard, and they handle then the multi-streaming piece, the pushing it out to different platforms. It's not reliant on you to send out a feed to YouTube, to Facebook, and wherever else, doubling or tripling down on the system resources that you need for each of those, but also the internet bandwidth that you would need to push out the feeds to the different providers. Now, in terms of the competition though for StreamYard, there are other good similar options out there that do have a lot of overlap with StreamYard. At one point, there were so many of these out there. Things like EVMux, for instance, which is another solid option, another one that I'm a big fan of. And it's probably got a higher level of customization over the scenes and how you can make things look. And it's even got things like the ISO video recording, like I mentioned the Ecamm has. So for those of you that are looking for something like StreamYard, but with a few of those extra features, then EVMux could be a good option for you. But one of the biggest standout features for me with StreamYard now, and a feature that I absolutely love, which is above and beyond live streaming and recording software, 
is their on-air feature, which is essentially full-blown event or webinar software all inside of StreamYard. And this is actually what we've been using in our business here at Primal Video when we run online training and live events, removing the need for dedicated webinar software and platforms altogether. With a big added benefit of the interface and everything is StreamYard. So it's simple and it's familiar and it's also fun to use. And just the same as I said with Ecamm, StreamYard as well has an amazing team. What they're building out with their community, actively listening, is awesome and it's so cool to see how far they've come from where they started to where they are now. And I love that they've taken that collaborative approach of working with their community. Now in terms of pricing, there's a few different options. There is a free plan. It does put a watermark on your stream, but it's a great place that you can dive in and really start to get used to how StreamYard works. Above that is their basic plan, which obviously removes that watermark and gives you access to a lot more features for $25 a month or $20 if you build annually. So you can see that's gonna give you three multi-stream destinations, 10 on-screen guests at once, and even enable pre-recorded live streams as well. But to unlock all the features and all the functionality of StreamYard, that's where you wanna jump on their professional plan, which is $49 a month or 39 if you're billing annually. That's gonna unlock things like full HD, 1080p live streams, the ability to add in an additional camera, but also access the on-air webinar feature as well. So that brings us then to the last option, and this one is OBS, or Open Broadcaster Software. And this is probably one of the most popular options, free options out there. And this is also kind of the OG when it comes to this kind of software, especially when you look at the overall interface, the way that the camera inputs work, and a lot of the advanced settings and things as well. So there's a lot of similarities between OBS and Prism Live. The interface though, to me, isn't as intuitive or isn't as polished as Prism. And I'd say OBS could be a lot more overwhelming for people, especially if you're an absolute beginner to jump in, to get up to speed, to configure everything up. There's an extra level of polish and simplicity in Prism. So I definitely position OBS more as someone who is at an intermediate to an advanced level user, because out of all the options mentioned, this one probably has the most amount of settings and the most amount of things that you can customize up. OBS works on Mac, on Windows, and there's even a Linux version too but there's also a huge community of users and developers behind the scenes with a lot of community created plugins and add-ons to OBS as well to help add more features and expand its usability. Just like Prism Live, there's no built-in guest feature straight out of the box, although you can find some workarounds and some plugins and stuff in the community to help you do that. But in a nutshell, you can really think of OBS as Prism Live on steroids. So if you're after a great amount of control and you're someone who really wants to dial everything in, then this could be your pick. It doesn't have a lot of the bells and whistles straight out of the box like Prism Live with the effects and all of that stuff. So it really is aimed at people who want to customize things up from the ground up. And this is something that I see all the time is that OBS is the go-to recommendation for a lot of people just to say that's what you got to use because it's free and it's got a lot in there. But it really is such an overwhelming thing that I think there are for a lot of people better options out there. But rounding all of this out and in summary, I think Prism Live is a great all-rounder. It's easy to use with some really cool features. StreamYard will suit a lot of people too with its web-based approach and its easy interface and making the whole guest thing super easy. Whereas Ecamm is probably my top all-rounder in my opinion. I think it's the perfect mix of ease of use and, and being simple enough with the interface and everything to find everything, but also with a lot more of the advanced features and controls as well. And obviously it's got the built-in guest feature too. Whereas OBS, as I've been hinting at, even though I'm someone who geeks out on this stuff and loves having access to more advanced features, controls and settings to really dial everything in, it's probably too much for a lot of people out there, or it's a really steep learning curve for them to pick up and really master. So personally though, what I use, I use Ecamm Live for live streaming. I even use it for recording a lot of these YouTube videos directly into the computer, which is actually what I'm doing right now. I also love using StreamYard if I'm doing a live stream with guests, or we use StreamYards to run our webinars and online events now too. But the one I am keeping a close eye on as well is Prism Live. It's come a really long way. It packs a punch for free live streaming software, 
and it's a good option. And as with any of these things, there really is no perfect solution. It's finding the one for you that allows you to do the thing, go live with the level of complexity of ease of use that you're after. And these ones right here, these are my short list right now. So to help you even further with your live streaming, I've got some tutorials that are linked on screen for some of the top options that I've covered here. As always, check out the links in the description below. We've got a bunch of other resources and tools to help you there too. And I will see you in the next video.